Customer service can make or break a business. Good customer service can mean that your customers and students keep coming back to you and refer your services and your products and your courses to other people. That's why for this episode, we are going to delve into customer service, why it's important for your online brand and how you can integrate good customer service when it comes to creating and selling your online course. Welcome to Bloggers Creating Courses, the podcast which will take you behind the scenes of creating an online course. I'm your host, Verity Songon, founder and education consultant of veritysongon.com. I'm so excited to help you create an online course that you are proud of and to be part of your journey to scale your business as an online course creator. Let's get into the episode. So for today's episode, I want to tell you all about an email which I received this morning. I got an email from the company Genius, which makes all sorts of gluten-free yummies and goodies and food, apologising because I bought a loaf of bread from them last week and the whole thing had a massive hole right through the loaf. I contacted them over Twitter And they got back to me within a couple of hours. Absolutely amazing customer service. And this morning, they have been lovely enough to send me an email profusely apologising for my bad experience with them and offering me some gift vouchers for their project, for some gift vouchers for their products, which I thought was absolutely lovely. A little bit of context to that. I do eat gluten free. I've been gluten free for the best part of probably 12 years now, which is quite a long time now, come to think of it. And Anybody who eats any type of free from diet or any type of diet where they need to watch what they eat, they will be able to tell you that finding alternative food products for normal quote unquote foods can be quite tricky. I haven't had experience um, with other free from products, but finding gluten free products which are tasty can be tricky. But Genius is my go to brand. And I felt like they completely came into their own with their customer service when they sent me this email, as I said, apologising. And their way of correcting this was to send me some vouchers, which I'm very excited about. And I will definitely be using those to buy more lovely products in their range. Because if you're in the UK, I don't know if um, they sell Genius gluten-free food outside of the UK, but if you're in the UK, if you eat gluten-free, I would definitely recommend their brand. But why am I telling you this? Because what is gluten-free bread got to do with online courses? Well, unless you're teaching a gluten-free bakery course online, probably not very much. But the bit that does relate to online courses is about the customer service. And that's what I want to talk about today. I want to talk about customer service when it comes to being an online course creator, because it's something that is often not talked about in the online course community. But once you've created your course and you've put it out there, you're selling a product. So you're interacting with students and your students are essentially your customers. So there has to be an element of customer service there. And customer service doesn't just begin and end with your landing page, your frequently asked questions, your refund policy, your terms and conditions. Customer service also encompasses if your students and when your students contact you because they have an issue. It could be an issue with the tech. It could be an issue they don't understand a part of the course. It might be that they're just not enjoying it and they're wondering if you do offer refunds. Anything really, but there is an element of customer support that is required when you're selling an online course. And that's something that you need to be prepared for in your online business when you're creating and when you are selling your online courses. Now, I'm not saying that you need to have a refund policy in place, for example. Not everybody agrees with offering refunds on digital products, and that's absolutely fine. I'm not here to tell you which one is right or wrong. I've got a blog post all about which side of the fence you might sit on for refund policies for online courses, and I'll link that in the show notes below. And I'm not saying that you have to offer a refund policy. I'm not even saying that you need to offer a discount code or a voucher for money off on another course or product that you sell. But what I am saying is you need to think about your customer support. So when a student, when a customer comes to you with questions, what response are you giving them? How are you representing yourself and your company that's going to make the student think, yeah, okay, 
things didn't quite go my way, but I've come away feeling like a valued customer and like a valued student because that is going to do so much for your business. They might not have expected the outcome that they got. They might not have liked the outcome that they got, but if they got good customer service, that can speak volumes when it comes to customer referrals because people are more likely to go online and rant about bad customer service than they are about good customer service. And what you don't want is to not reply to questions about your course, not reply to questions about refunds or money back or tech queries or whatever it is that your students might contact you about. What you want is them to go away feeling fulfilled with your answer and not going away and slagging you off all over the internet and on social media because they don't feel that they have received good customer service. So how can you provide good customer service? What I would suggest is coming up with bank answers, which you can have saved in a Google Doc or on your Google Drive, wherever it is that you that you work, and having stock answers for common questions that people might email you about. And if you want to, you can even delve a little deeper and not just have answers, but have explanatory answers. So for example, if somebody emails you and says, I really don't like this course, I want a refund. If you don't offer refunds, think about how you would want to be responded to as a customer and as a consumer. Would you want an email back that simply says, hi, we don't give refunds, yours faithfully? Or would you prefer an email which comes back to you saying, hi, we're really sorry that you're not enjoying the course so far. Would you mind explaining which parts it is that you're feeling stuck on or you're not feeling our value for money? Unfortunately, we don't offer refunds, but we're happy to help in any way to make your course experience more more attainable to you. Think about which email you'd prefer to receive. Personally, I'd prefer to receive the second one because it could actually be that the reason the person wants a refund or money off another product, for example, is because they've got stuck on something which actually once you've had a conversation with them, they can then proceed with the course or they can then proceed with that section that they're stuck on or they're working on. And I had this situation once with a previous course that I created for a company and I had somebody contact saying that they wanted a refund because they couldn't access the course properly. And when we troubleshooted this, we found out that it was because of the web browser they were using. The web browser settings that they were using were enabled in such a way that they couldn't actually access most of the course because of the way that it was created and and written. It was it was written using SCORM files, and their um their internet browser wasn't wasn't set up to receive those um and process those, so they couldn't access the course. So after we troubleshooted that, we got them using a different device, a different web browser, and they were then able to access the course. And they then didn't want the refund because they could access the product as they wanted it. What we then did with that feedback is we had a happy customer, they went off, they completed their course. But then what we did was we went back to the landing page. I want to quickly interrupt this episode to tell you about the Course Creator Mastermind. The Mastermind helps you create, grow and scale your online course. Consider this as a new way to learn to build an online course and to teach online. Included in the Mastermind is a self-paced online course with actionable step-by-step lessons for you to implement. Lessons which are based on teaching theory and taught by someone with teaching qualifications and experience. There's an exclusive Facebook group where you will be involved in a community of like-minded individuals. You'll have access to eight live classes with me, Verity Songon, where you can ask me anything about creating an online course. Each class will have a different focus to help you create, grow and scale your online course, as well as a live Q&A session. Within the Mastermind, you will have access to a self-paced online course with lifetime access, email support from me, eight weekly group mentoring sessions with live Q&A, an exclusive one-to-one mentoring call, an online course audit, peer feedback session. I only open the doors to this Mastermind a few times a year. This is limited and I only take 20 people per cohort. 
So make sure you're signed up soon to avoid disappointment. Go to veritysongon.com slash mastermind or click the link in the show notes to enroll today. And on the landing page, we put information explaining which type of web browser you needed to be using as a student in order to access the course correctly and in a way that would improve your learning experience. The other thing that we did is just in case people miss that information is at the beginning of the course, we put a little video for students to watch, which they could access on any browser, explaining that after that video, if you weren't using browser X, Y or Z, you might not be able to access the course content correctly. So what we did was we included information, we learned from that experience and we included information to help prevent the same issue from arising again. And that's all part of your customer service experience is looking at that loop and thinking, well, if one person experienced this issue, how many other people could be experiencing this issue? And how am I going to close that loop and prevent this issue from occurring again? Now, you're never going to stop every single issue happening any time in the future. But what you can do is put things in place to help prevent the same issues from coming up again. So in this episode, the takeaway that I would like you to have is thinking about your customer service. When your students or prospective students contact you, how do you want your brand, your company and yourself to be demonstrated and to be shown for your online business and to your students and your customers? And what I want you to be thinking about is how would you like to be treated if you were the customer on the other end? And as I said, it might be worth when you have students and customers contact you with frequent questions is start keeping a Google Doc or a series of documents in a Google Drive or wherever it is that you work with these different questions that are coming in. And then you can start having some stock answers which you can develop with time and that's the great thing about frequently asked questions is you can also put them on your landing page if you feel that's appropriate for your product or somewhere on your website but you can develop these answers as people come back to you if they continue to have questions you can develop those answers so that eventually what you're doing is helping your customer service work for itself. But you can have your customer service essentially working for itself and almost on autopilot. You want to personalize customer service as much as possible. You don't want people to feel that they're just getting a copy and paste answer from you. But at the same time, if you've got your stock bank of answers, when people do come to you for questions, is first of all, it helps you keep your cool, particularly if somebody comes at you and the email or the message that they send you seems a little bit off and you're not very happy with the tone. It can be very easy to feel quite defensive first off. So if you've got the stock bank of answers, it helps you answer in a way which is informative and not led by emotion, which again, doesn't always put you in best stead for presenting yourself or your brand. But what it also means is it means that you are giving the same information across the board to all of your students and to all of your customers. So I hope you found this useful and interesting. If you're wondering where the link to gluten-free bread came in, hopefully that has now self And you're feeling more confident with approaching customer service when it comes to creating and selling your online course and working in your digital business. I'll see you next time, guys. Happy content creating. Thanks for tuning in to this episode of Bloggers Creating Courses. If you enjoyed this episode and you'd like to help support the podcast, please share it with others, leave a rating and a review. Ratings and reviews help us to reach more people who want to build and scale their online course. So you're really helping to widen the support for our blogging community. To catch all of the latest from me, you can follow me on Instagram at Verity Songon. I'll see you next time. Happy content creating.